In this lesson, we're going to cover the basic ways to actually configure an IP address. Now for your desktop computers, you will likely use the dynamic host configuration protocol, which automatically assigns IP addresses to machines based on a predefined pool you've already created. But for servers, you're very typically going to use static IP addresses. This means the server will always have the same IP address every time the operating system starts. The most simple way is via the graphical interface. For example, through the little network system tray icon, I can right click and say open network and sharing center. This is also just a control panel applet. So if you had just opened the control panel, you'll also see the network and sharing center. From here, I can click change adapter settings, right click on my adapter and select properties. From here, you scroll down, select internet protocol version four, and click properties. As you can see currently, this machine is configured to use DHCP. You'll notice this alternate configuration tab. This is designed for if I am using DHCP, but a DHCP server cannot be found, I can actually configure some static IP configuration to be used instead of the automatic private IP address, the 169.254, which means you're using DHCP, but no DHCP server was available, so it just made up an IP address which generally means you won't be able to communicate to other systems. So if you wanted to, you could say, I normally want to use DHCP, but when not available, use this configuration instead. If I want to configure static IP, I just say use the following IP and then type in my new information. Notice I have an IP address. I have that subnet mask. So notice it's automatically filling in 255.255.255 because a 192.168 represents a class C, i.e. 24 bits used for the subnet mask. If I change this, for example, let me just wipe this out and started typing in 10.1.1. .1. Now it's given me the subnet mask for a class A, which is eight bits for the subnet mask. So it's actually making some decisions based on the IP address you configure. I would also fill in a default gateway and then DNS servers. Notice also I have this advanced box. This is where I could add additional IP addresses. So this one network adapter could actually have multiple IP addresses. I can specify my gateway in this dialog with different metrics for their priority. How important are they? I can configure my DNS addresses so I can configure more than two. I can configure DNS suffix, which these are the names that are added after my machine's host name when it's searching DNS for records. If you're using WINS, I can also configure my WINS servers in this dialog. So this is really the graphical way that you're gonna configure your machine. But I'm gonna cancel that. Another option is to use the command prompt. And we covered this in the earlier module. But if I open up my command prompt, the first thing I can see is I can use the net sh command to show my current configuration. So it's currently saying DHCP is enabled but I could also manually set my config. I can say net shell interface IP set address on names. This is the name of the adapter. So mine is called ethernet, but yours might be local area connection. I want to say my source equals static. And I want my address to be that 192.168.1.27 with a subnet mask i.e. mask equals 255.255.255.0 and I'll specify a default gateway of 192.168.1.1. I can also add my DNS server. So I can say, for example, netsh interface IP set DNS servers on my name equals ethernet. So static. And this is the IP address of my DNS server, and it's my primary. I can see this configuration would have now been changed in the graphical tool. And there's that configuration I made from the command prompt. Again, I'm not configuring WINS information. WINS is for when we're using a NetBIOS name. So you have an application that doesn't use a DNS name, a host name, it uses the NetBIOS name. And WINS provides that catalog of NetBIOS names to IP addresses in a similar way that DNS provides that mapping for host names to IP addresses. And I can also switch back to DHCP if I wanted to 
just by basically setting the DHCP command. So on this here, the NetSH interface IP set address, I can say source equals DHCP. And I can also say the same for my DNS server. As you would expect, I can also do all this from PowerShell. Now, I'm actually running this as administrator. So again, you shift right click and you would have the option to run as administrator. And basically with PowerShell, what I'm initially doing is adding a new IP address. So I'm gonna say a new net IP address. The interface alias is my ethernet. The IP address is my 192.168.1.27. My prefix length, so this is the subnet mask. So instead of saying 255.255.255.0, I'm saying the number of bits that make up the subnet mask. So in this case, it's the first 24 bits. And then I'm just gonna say my address family is IPv4. So now it's configured a static IP address. I can also add a new net route. So this is basically gonna be my default gateway. So I'm gonna say my interface alias, once again, is ethernet. My destination prefix is everything. So everything else. So 0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0 slash zero. So everything. And my next hop is gonna be my gateway. Excuse me, dash next hop. So that's my default gateway now. I can also go and configure my DNS addresses. So set DNS client server addresses on my interface alias of ethernet. And my server addresses are 192.168.1.10 and 192.168.1.11. So I've also configured my DNS servers. So now if I actually decide to look at my configuration, so we could do this from the GUI. I could do IP config as well. There's all that configuration I just configured with PowerShell. So really I can configure it from the GUI. I can configure it from the command prompt with NetSH, or I can configure it with PowerShell using the various net IP address, net route, and DNS client server addresses.